Mr. President. Senator from Texas. Mr. President, I have spoken throughout these last several days about how the Nord Stream 2 pipeline, the Biden-Putin pipeline, runs counter to everything that the Biden administration professes to stand for. And indeed, much of the Democrat Party, what they have been insisting on for the last half decade are the most important issues of the country. We, of course, spent four years during the Trump presidency listening to Democrats say Russia, Russia, Russia over and over and over again. It was a newfound discovery. Some of us are old enough to remember Barack Obama turning to Mitt Romney in the 2012 presidential election when Mitt Romney was advocating for strength in dealing with Russia for taking on Putin. And some of us remember Obama looking at, looking at, at, at uh, Mitt Romney and saying, Mitt, the 1980s call, they want their foreign policy back. That was 2012, when the Democrats thought it was passe to stand up to Russia. Then 2016 happened, Donald Trump was elected president, and suddenly the Democratic Party got religion. Suddenly Russia was bad. Now, I thought Russia was bad before. I thought Russia was bad when Trump was president. I think Russia's bad now. I don't like dictatorial thugs like Vladimir Putin, who's a KGB thug. But interestingly, for our friends on the Democratic side of the aisle, their outrage against Russia is situational. It applies only in the situation that a Republican is in the White House. When a Democrat is in the White House, when Joe Biden is there, suddenly Putin is hunky-dory. Suddenly Democrats don't have much of a problem with Joe Biden defying federal law, ignoring federal law, and giving a multi-billion dollar gift to Putin. Suddenly the Democrats who've given all these speeches on Russia, who passed Katza, I talked earlier about Katza, the legislation that imposes mandatory sanctions on Russia to stop a president who refuses to impose those sanctions. Well, Joe Biden is in defiance of Katza. Do you see a single Democrat standing up saying, Mr. President, obey Katza? Nope. They're whining that the Deputy Assistant Undersecretary of whatchamacallit has not been confirmed yesterday. And clearly the world is going to come to an end without a Deputy Assistant of whatchamacallit. If our Democratic colleagues believed their rhetoric of the last four years, we would see Democrats stand up with me and say, Joe Biden's multi-billion dollar gift to Putin is a mistake. But they're not. One of the ironies, in addition to the Russia, Russia, Russia thing, and the truth of the matter is, most of the Democrats never believed Russia, Russia, Russia. If you go back to the Soviet Union, if you go back to the Reagan administration, Democrats had spent decades as apologists for Soviet communists, as apologists for Russian dictators. But for four years, I got to say, our Democratic colleagues can give a good speech. They sure sounded genuine when they said Russia, Russia, Russia. But if they believed those words, then they would look at Joe Biden, Kamala Harris, and they'd say, Russia, Russia, Russia. Because, by the way, they didn't like Donald Trump's rhetoric on Russia. And by the way, I didn't like a lot of the things President Trump said on Russia. I, w I wish his rhetoric had been stronger. But it's worth noting, Trump had the courage to call out Germany for Nord Stream 2. Tr Trump had the courage to impose sanctions under the bipartisan sanctions legislation we passed into law, the Cruz-Shaheen legislation passed in 2019, and the second wave of Cruz-Shaheen bipartisan legislation passed in 2020. President Trump imposed. What did Joe Biden do? Waived it. What did Joe Biden do? Ignored the law. What did Joe Biden do? Give a multi-billion dollar gift to Putin. So if any Democrat meant a word they said about Russia, we got to see them standing here. You will note the Democratic side of the floor is largely empty. But not only is Joe Biden's rhetoric and the Democrats' rhetoric on Russia not matched by their action, 
But we also know that Biden's actions don't meet the Democrats' rhetoric on climate. Now, what I want to address now is environmentalism and climate, which President Biden and the left tells us are existential issues. There is nothing mattering more, they say, than climate change. That if we don't fight climate change, Nebraska is going to be underwater, they tell us. They say we need to follow the example of our European allies in agreements like the Paris Accords. But the Nord Stream 2 pipeline will grind any European energy transition to a halt by making the Europeans even more dependent on Russian gas. Now, some proponents have argued that the natural gas delivered by Nord Stream 2 would be kind of a transition technology. But the German Institute for Economic Research's senior energy expert described Nord Stream 2 on these issues as, quote, unnecessary and inefficient. More analysis, published again just last week, projected that the Nord Stream 2 pipeline would emit over 100 million metric tons of CO2 per year, plus fugitive methane. The gas that Nord Stream 2 would deliver compares very badly to the alternative, and that is LNG, liquid natural gas. In 2019, the U.S. Department of Energy's National Energy Technology Lab published a study showing that U.S. LNG shipped to European markets has 41% less life cycle emissions than if those same countries were to receive natural gas from another predominant producer like Russia. Mr. President, listen to that again. Because our Democratic colleagues love to pound the table how carbon is the greatest threat on the planet. Well, Joe Biden is saddling Europe with an energy option that produces much more CO2 than American LNG. American LNG, 41% less carbon dioxide. If they believe their rhetoric, you'd see Democrats standing up to Joe Biden. If Joe Biden believed his rhetoric, I guess you'd see Joe Biden standing up to himself. If John Kerry believed his rhetoric, in between his flights on a private jet, where John Kerry has the carbon footprint of a small town, in between his pontificating and lecturing American workers that they just need to learn to code, if John Kerry believed climate was this existential disaster, he'd be standing up saying, President Biden, why are you defying Congress, defying the European Euro Union, and giving Putin a multi-billion dollar gift that produces more CO2? There's no argument from the left or the right under which Nord Stream 2 is a good idea. But especially on the basis of what the left tells us are their most important issues. Russia, 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 it's a disaster on Russia, Russia, Russia. CO2, it's a disaster on CO2. You know, Twitter today is lit up with a certain European teenager who's fond at lecturing the world about insufficient fealty to climate. And she responded to American leaders who, to use her words, say blah, blah, blah when it comes to climate. Mr. President, I got to say, our Democratic colleagues, this Democratic administration, when it comes to Nord Stream 2, their only answer is blah, blah, blah. They don't have an answer that they are resulting in. What was the figure again? Let's actually get that figure right. 100 million metric tons of CO2 per year. Congratulations. 
The next time you give a speech saying that you want to double Americans' electricity bills, you want to bankrupt working families because of CO2, remember you didn't seem worried about it when it was the Russians producing the CO2 in a way that hurts Europe, hurts our allies, and hurts America. Look, I get party politics. People want to stand and support their party. I get it. When there's a Republican president, Republicans support them, generally. When there's a Democratic president, Democrats support them, generally. That's the way it works. That's not terribly shocking. But is it asking too much for even one of the Democrats to believe what they've said for the last five years? Throughout the course of these remarks, you know who I've quoted more than anyone else? Senate Democrats. I've quoted their own remarks. Senate Democrats understand Nord Stream 2 is a disaster. They understand it's harmful. They understand it's bad for America. Where they just can't screw up the courage is when it comes to standing up to a Democratic president. By the way, they're perfectly happy to yell at Donald Trump. I get that. And to be clear, when we had a Republican president, Donald Trump, I pressed the Trump administration hard on Nord Stream 2, even though we're the same party. I was not remotely shy about pressing the Trump administration. There are 50 Democrats in this chamber. Is there one who believed Russia, Russia, Russia? Or was that all empty politics? Is there one who believes their hyperbolic rhetoric on CO2 and climate? Or is that all just blah, blah, blah? It's real simple. The Biden administration has a chance to fix this. Just this weekend, the German people voted out the Merkel government. The entire reason Joe Biden went down this foolhardy, disastrous path was to kiss up to Angela Merkel. Well, you know what? She's gone. Her party's gone. They're out of power. And so Joe Biden and Kamala Harris have been giving a present, a present of the chance to pull victory out of the jaws of defeat. We had victory from, 19, uh, from 2019 to 2020 where we'd shut down the pipeline. Republicans and Democrats together in Congress had come together and shut down the pipeline. Putin had lost. America had won. Joe Biden comes into office, and now Putin wins, America loses. That ain't good. That ain't good in Michigan. It ain't good in Arizona. It ain't good in any state in this country. And Joe Biden can fix it if he simply accepts the gifts the German voters have given him, reverses course, and follows U.S. law. Let's stop the Biden-Putin pipeline. Let's give an opportunity for President Biden to pull his name off the pipeline. By the way, if he were to do so, I'll come to this floor and I'll sing, I'll sing Joe Biden's praises for doing the right thing, for following the law, for standing up for America, for standing up to Russia, for de defending our European allies. But sadly, I'm not holding my breath. I think the hubris of office Stubbornness is likely to keep the Biden administration digging in. In the Senate, I'm going to use every tool I have to try to press them to change their minds. And I would call on, is there even one Democrat with the courage to take on Russia? Time will tell. I yield the floor.